We're going to focus on the work that Mendel did and how his initial experiments led him to his first law, which is the law of segregation. And we'll also look at how to use Punnett squares to determine probability in genetic crosses. So generally speaking, what Mendel did working with his pea plants is first he self-pollinated genetically pure plants. So these genetically pure plants, what that means is they were homozygous. Okay? So they always produced um, offspring that were identical to themselves. So yellow seed plants always produced plants with yellow seeds, and that continued generation after generation after generation. Um, and he called these the P generation, the parent generation. Then what Mendel did is he took his genetically pure homozygous plants, so for example, a plant that has yellow seeds and a plant that has green seeds, and he crossed them together. And he called that the F1 generation. The F stands for filial, not something you need to know. So F1 generation. And then he crossed two of the F1 plants, which in this case all had yellow seeds, um, to form the F2 generation. So he was dealing with three generations. P generation, which produced the F1 generation, which produced the F2 generation. I really like this diagram over here because it has, does a nice job of showing Mendel's results. So P generation, yellow and green peas, right? When he produced offspring from that, they all had yellow peas. And then self-fertilized, so it means he took a plant from this generation and crossed it with another plant from this generation. Um, and what we see now is that the green starts to reappear. Okay? Um, and he found that it was always pretty much in a three to one ratio where three fourths of the offspring were the same as the F1 generation, okay, so in this case yellow, right up here, and one fourth were the other trait that had kind of disappeared in that F1 generation. And when he tested this with all those seven different traits of a pea plant, he found the same pattern emerging every single time. The results led Mendel to um, the following conclusion. He thought that there was one copy of a factor, he called it a factor, what we now know as a gene, in each gamete that was produced by the plants. Um, and he said that different versions of these genes are called alleles, as we discussed earlier. So, as we remember, the egg has one copy of every chromosome, the sperm has one copy of every chromosome, those come together. So in this case, if the egg and the sperm both have the same allele for a trait, then the genotype for that trait would be homozygous and dominant. Specifically, Mendel talked about the law of segregation. And we've looked at this when we were studying meiosis. The chromosome pairs separate so that each gamete gets one allele for any given trait. So think back to meiosis, right, which we can see over here happening. So when those homologous chromosomes separate during the first division, and then the chromatids separate during the second division, you end up with one chromosome in each, from each pair, original pair, in the gametes. And to tie it all in with um, fertilization as well, and back to Mendel's experiment, right, so this is showing from the P generation to the F1. So here we have our homozygous dominant yellow P and homozygous recessive green P. When the gametes are formed, the gametes in this case would have the same gene or same allele in each gamete produced by the parent, so big Y, big Y, or little y, little y. During fertilization, those two come together to form the zygote. Now our zygote is heterozygous. It has one dominant yellow allele and one recessive green allele. So in our F1 generation, all of the Ps were heterozygous, one dominant, one recessive. When we use Punnett squares, it's just a way of representing the different possible um, genotypes that you can end up with in the offspring based on the genotypes of the parents. So on the outside, we put our gamete possibilities. So what gametes can be, what or what alleles will be in the gametes from each parent. So we have one parent on one side or on the top and one parent on the other side. And then when you combine all of those, it gives you the different possibilities for genotype combinations in the offspring. So if we connect this into Mendel's experiment, one parent was homozygous dominant, 
the other parent was homozygous recessive. So there's only really one allele possibility in each case. Um, when we combine these, because during fertilization you get one copy of each um, allele or one copy of each gene or chromosome from each parent, you can see that all of the offspring in this case would be heterozygous, okay, and they would all be yellow, which is what Mendel found. When Mendel self-fertilized those F1 plants, okay, now we can see that there's a 50-50 chance from that, so if this was representing the egg cells produced by the female plant, 50% likelihood that they'd have the dominant allele, 50% likelihood they'd have the recessive allele. Same for the male plant because that was the only combination because they all had, they were all heterozygous. So now we can see if we look at the possibilities, right, and so I'm just kind of filling in, dropping down, um, right, so moving this one across, this one across, this one down, this one down. And if you have any questions about how to actually complete a Punnett square, please, please, please come see me. Um, but now we can see that, let's see if I circle this one, this one, and this one would all be yellow, right? So three-fourths yellow because they have at least one dominant allele. Okay, um, One of them is, right here, is homozygous dominant. These two are heterozygous. So they, we have two different genotypes, but these three all have the same phenotype. And then one-fourth of the plants would be green. And that matches up with Mendel's results. The Punnett square we just looked at is an example of a monohybrid cross. Mono means one, right? So one trait and both parents are heterozygous for that trait or hybrid. Um, and we always seem to get the same ratios for those. So if we look at another example, let's say Mendel crossed two plants that were both heterozygous tall, okay? we'd find that one fourth of the plants, so one right here, would be homozygous dominant two-fourths heterozygous, and then one-fourth recessive. So that's our genotypic ratio. And then we could say that of the three-fourths would be tall, and one-fourth would be short. So we get a three-to-one phenotypic ratio. One other thing I want to mention that you can use um, Punnett squares for um, is to figure out the results of a test cross. And you use a test cross when you need to determine the genotype, right? So the genotype of an organism with a dominant phenotype. Because if it's dominant and we don't know information about parents or anything like that, you don't know if it's homozygous dominant or heterozygous. So let's say we have um, a tall pea plant and we don't know if it's homozygous, dom homozygous tall or heterozygous. What you do is you cross it with a homozygous recessive plant. So if the plant were homozygous dominant crossed with a recessive plant, then you'll notice that all of the offspring would be tall, all tall offspring. However, if that plant were heterozygous, and it was crossed with a um, recessive plant, you see that 50% of the plants would be tall, but 50% would be short. So that would give you the indication that the parent, the tall parent, had a recessive allele. Oftentimes test crosses might be used for agriculture when you want to make sure you have a pure, you know, pure line of plants or something like that.